did you ever think, okay, if I'm not going to be a cricketer, I would like to be fill in the blank, or has that never crossed your mind? At a young age, I wanted to be a soccer player. Okay. To be honest, um, cricket kind of took over because of the the, the schooling that I went to. Um, you know, your private schools generally, you know, prioritized, you know, cricket or rugby over other sports. And because I was there in that system, that's where cricket cricket took over. But I always wanted to be a, a soccer player. Position? Position, more in your attacking position. So midfielder, attacking midfielder, striker. I think now maybe, you know, the height would be against me to be a striker. So I think more in the midfield. How tall is Messi? Messi, yeah, but Messi is very, Messi is very skilled. He's not yep. the tallest of individuals, but he's very, he's very skilled. Uh, I, people who know me will just say, I'm just putting in a word for the short people that, that we can mm -hmm. potentially do anything at all. I want to read to you a, a quote from Hashim Amla. This was, was soon after the Newlands game. And he said, Temba and I have very similar careers. The first time you play test cricket, everybody doubts you because of the color of your skin, even though you've got the stats to back it up domestically. First of all, has that been a feature of your career that you felt there was an additional hurdle other than just the game? And if that hurdle was there, how have, how have you overcome it? Yeah, I can definitely um, reiterate um, um, Hashim Amla's words there. I mean, that's definitely uh, a challenge that you face as a as a player of color, if I can say. And I think from, from my side, you know, for me, it was a bit more of an, there was a bit of an, an extra element to it all. You know, I'm I'm not the tallest of individuals, so having mm. to deal with that um, with that attitude or perception that you know I'm not I'm not of the right height or of the right build to make it, mm. you know, in sports. So I had to tr I had to deal with that um, with, with with that um, added bit of bit of pressure as well, and that's something that I've been dealing with that I've dealt from from a young age. But having having made it to international level, you know, and I mean. I think the that attitude of perception is always there that if a player of color is um is is selected to represent it, you know, unfortunately the people always question is he there on merit or is he there because of his ability and until you do something of of significance at that level, you know, almost like what you've done before, you know, it means nothing. But what you, what you do at that level, that's when guys, you know, will start seeing you in a different light. So I mean I agree 100% with Hashim Amla, and I don't think it's something that um, should, um, as an obstacle for players of color. It's almost, you know, if you embrace that element, you know, that that added bit of pressure, you know, you could turn that that negative, you know, um, sentiment, if I could say, into something positive and use it to, you know, to to improve your game. I wonder, though, if that doesn't disadvantage perhaps certain kinds of personalities because you, you've obviously developed a calm space in your head. But equally, there might be a young player who thinks, OK, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I would have thought one of the most dangerous things in a game of cricket with a bat in your hand mm. is if you try to do something out of, out of a sense of emotion because isn't that where mistakes are made? And it seems to me fundamentally unfair that somebody has that additional thing the bowling's difficult enough the pitch isn't great but in addition you've got this little nagging voice behind you saying well exa why are you here in the first place doesn't that doesn't that affect other people perhaps more negatively than you've allowed it to affect you yeah definitely i think it's the way you look at that um that element or that um added bit of pressure you know looking better looking back at my at my career from a young guy you know um, the way you've just put it, you know, I definitely played under that emotion that, hmm. you know, I'm gonna prove it to, I'm gonna prove it to my teammates, I'm gonna prove it to the coach that I can actually play here despite, you know, my so-called disadvantage of, hmm. of my height, and only, you know, um, later on, you know, in my cricket, you know, my early twenties, where I remember sitting down with one of the coaches and he said to me, I don't have to prove anything hmm. to anyone. Hmm. You know, and at that time it was very hard to accept because I still felt that I was being, um, I don't want to say ostracized, but I still felt that I was being, you know, looked looked past because of because of my because of my build. So, but also because I think of my stubbornness, mm. you know, my <laughs> my 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 inner belief. You know, I mm. kind of, you know, I kind of use that element to try, you know, turn it into to something 
positive and get me and get me to where I wanted to be. How many good players, young black players, do you think we're losing because of that additional pressure, because of that little cloud that they play under? There, 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 there must be a drop off. I'm not talking about people who necessarily would have played for South Africa, but would have moved up through club cricket, representative cricket in age group, uh, provincial selections, and so on. Aren't we losing players because of that? I think I think if you were to take, you know, all your first class cricketers you know, black African first class cricketers, put them in a room and ask them that question, how many of them feel that pressure that they need to, you know, perform a bit more than others because mm. of the colour of the skin, you'll probably find that ninety percent of them feel that they have to, you know, they they, they have to perform a bit more. But, you know, I don't wanna I don't wanna say that it's a it puts us at a disadvantage. Mm. You know, I just feel that it's a pressure that you, you need to embrace. It's something that's there in front of you. It's not going anywhere. So, you know, it's just an obstacle that you need to you need to overcome. And how you overcome it, you just need to find a way from a mental point of view, you know, to, to deal with that pressure, you know, and, and do what you can do. You know, what I've learned is that as an international cricketer, you know, pressure is a big part of the game. You know, your skill, your skill takes you to a certain level, but then the pressure for you to deal with the pressure you have to draw back from your from your inner self from your mental capability so in a situation like this you know where your black you know african cricketers batsmen or whatever mm. they faced with a pressure like this you know guys just need to just need to find a way you know internally to deal with it i want to step back from what we're talking about now and, and ask a broader question. South African cricket isn't in great shape at the moment. There seems to be quite a lot of self-doubt, uh, both in the five-day game and in the shorter formats. Um, there's a committee now tasked with lo- with looking at the game. Do you have some thoughts on that? Is this just a cycle that teams have where uh, perhaps some veterans move on, you know, people like Jacques Cullis come to mind, Graham Smith, or, or do you think we've got a problem that we need to look at? I think um, it's almost a situation where it's almost, it might be a situation where an era has almost come to, has come to an end. I mean, yes. you've, lost, you've lost great players like um, Short Cullis, um, Graham Smith, you know, Mark Boucher, you know, and those aren't players that you can replace, you know, in three months or in six months. And I think, you know, the results that you see now is probably evident of that. And I think, you know, obviously with our with our media and our fans, you know, we, we have a high high standard, you know, when it comes to our sport, you know, the guys expect us to be doing well and rightly so. But I think, you know, I attribute, you know, our results to, to that point. And I mean, if you look at the team, you know, there's a lot of inexperienced guys at the moment, guys who are still making their way, you know, at international mm. level, you know, guys like myself, guys like Dane Pete, um, Simon Homer, Kahiso Rabada, Dane Villas, you know, I mean, those are just to name a few. So it's very, you know, I think a bit more room, you know, should be should be given, you know, to the guys just to find their feet. And then, you know, maybe after two years, you know, just, just, just to put a time frame to it, you know, you can probably see us replicating those same performances. But, I mean, all the guys that have retired, Graham Smith, um, Shaw Kallis, they didn't start doing well, you know, in their first year of international cricket. It took them time for them to get to where they are. And so I think I should maybe, you know, keep that in mind. You know, I don't I don't believe that it's due to it's due to elements of transformation yes. and you know, all of those policies that have been formulated. I don't I I, I don't I don't I don't um, attribute our poor poor performances to that. I think it's just a it's just a cycle, you know, a new era that's starting. It's interesting that that you 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 finish by saying that because it it wasn't there in my question at all, and in fact wasn't wasn't in my thinking at all. But is that is that an undercurrent in our sport in general that you feel there is a constituency of people out there who will look to blame transforming the game, be it football, rugby, or or, or cricket? for a drop in performance is that a conversation that you feel is somewhere somewhere out there even if you and i aren't having that Mm. conversation now i think in the conversations that i've been part of in the conversation that i've heard you know in things that i see on social media transformation is always there on top of the list as to why as to why the team lost 
or as to why the performances of the team, you know, are not where they should be. So that's why I mentioned it. Yeah. I mentioned um that that issue, and obviously with the whole um with um our minister, you know, and his decision that he made, you know, that kind of you know magnified everything a bit more. You talk timber very calmly about these things, but but are there times when 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 they annoy you when you get fed up and you say you know what I, I I can't believe we're still having this conversation. I think I've got to a point where you know I've kind of embraced it. I've kind of accepted the whole the whole attitude or the mm. whole um mindset about it all. You know, so from my side, I don't see I don't see a, a point you know in getting worked up about it mm, all because mm. it's it's there in front of you you know it's not it's not going to go anywhere so you just got to you got to you got to deal with it and it might be easier in my position for me to to adopt this kind of a mindset you know and these are the, and that's what I try um I try advise younger yeah. black african cricketers you know when they talk about the different pressures that they face and they ask about the pressures that that I face and I just try to say to them that there will always be pressures. Uh, everyone faces different pressures. There will be pressures that are common to, to me as a black African cricketer to, to another black African cricketer. But I think where it matters is, is dealing with it. Yeah, and just finding and just finding a way. I mean, I, I know that it sounds very... I sound very lackadaisy about it all. But it's just... It's well, just in fact, you sound very determined. Quite the opposite of yeah. lackadaisical. Yeah, I think because I've experienced it a lot, you know, man, from a, from a young age, you know. So when I see it now, it doesn't it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me if I read a comment, you know, in in social media, in newspaper, wherever, where you know transformation, you know, is put as blame for for poor performances. It doesn't surprise me, and it doesn't it doesn't affect me from a from a mental point of view. The the coming to, to play for the Highfelt Lions and, and working with Jeff Toyana, we had him on the same show a couple of months back and he spoke very highly of you and, and, and has obviously enjoyed working with you. How important has it been for you not only to have Jeff as a cricketer who also learned his game in the townships, but Jeff as a batsman, uh, as your coach? How important has that been for you? He's quoted as saying that he's trying to chill at home and the phone rings mm -hmm. and it's Timber saying, come coach and he tries to remind you that he actually has a family <laughs> um, and you say no 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 no, I need I need you and I'll meet you in the net so clearly there's a bond between you but but describe if you will what it's meant for you yeah I've enjoyed my time with my time with coach Jeff um, when Jeff joined the Lions you know I was still a young guy I mean a young a young puppy if I could say I was about you know 20 21 and from there we developed a very you know strong strong relationship and I think the greatest you know, asset of Jeff as a coach, you know, he's been able to break that barrier between player and coach. You know, mm. we don't we don't almost see him as the player, you know, we see him as our as our friend. You know, whatever issues we have, you know, outside of cricket, you know, me specifically, you know, I can go to Jeff and say, Hey Jeff, you know, this is what I'm dealing with. What do you think? So, you know, our relationship, you know, has has been strong because of that, you know, the trust element, you know, is there. I trust Jeff in my game. You know, I know I, I make him work a lot. You know, he's always complaining to me <laughs> that I make him come on his off days, you know, yes. to work, for to, to have batting sessions. But it's more, you know, he's, 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 he's become more of a mentor. You know, as much as I won't, I won't say it to him, but, you know, I kind of see him that way. And and I think not just for myself, you know, Jeff has been great, has been great towards um, towards everyone. He's, he's done a fantastic job for the Lions. I think he's actually the most um, successful coach you know, in the domestic, in the domestic um, scene, ever if 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 I may be wrong, the, the the trophies that he's won. So you know, I enjoy my time with Jeff, and you know, as long as Jeff is there at the Lions, I'm not going anywhere. I started off by asking you what you do in the off season, but of course, cricket has lots of downtime during a game. You might be in the stands watching the game. Perhaps you you you've already batted, and and there's still a lot of cricket to go. And then on tour, there are days. And I'm sure people imagine, wow, what a glamorous life. You fly around, you're in hotels, uh, you don't have to do anything for yourself. Does it get boring? And how do you fill the time if it does? It gets very boring, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, 
<laughs> you know, you can play so much cricket. Um, but when we get back to the hotel, sometimes there's not much to do. Mm. And if you're playing in places like India, you know, I'm roaming around the streets. It's not the it's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, from my side as a hobby, I've started I started DJing about okay. three four years ago. So that takes up a lot of my my spare time. Um, I've got a little set, you know, mixer controller that I um that I travel with. So that takes up a lot of time. And actually, even Kahiso Rabada, we play together in the room and yeah and that comes from the more my interest in in music house house music to be more specific 